uh, four phases of uh, virtual reality technology. We've had the technology that was developed in the 1950s and 60s by Ivor Sutherland. Uh, that was from virtual representation of the computer world. We've also had the technology that was developed by NASA and then by BPL. And that was, again, the training uh, and application, military. And then the entertainment side, which we call the third phase, uh, with virtuality being the most pre predominant of those machines. And now we're in phase four, as we like to say, with the Oculus Rift. So we've gone really from training to uh, out-of-home entertainment to now consumer applications. Even when Virtual Boy was being released, we were still working and developing in this technology. Uh, the technology exists, it's just the applications failed the first time around due to hype, due to poor promotion and perception of what the technology could actually achieve. The reason why I feel that this time around, as I said before, phase four of the virtual reality roller coaster uh, is going to succeed is not because the technology is better, it's not because the game is better, but because the ideals and the uh, enthusiasm behind it is much more focused. So even if the worst situation happens and some of the leading companies fail to deliver their core product, there is such a momentum behind virtual reality this time around that I think it will be impossible to stop it. Virtual reality technology is going through a revival currently in the gaming industry. A company called Oculus Crown funded the development of a head-mounted display called the Oculus Rift. It uses lenses which allows it you to kind of focus directly on this display in front of you and it encompasses your field of vision. Um, and they combine this with positional tracking so you can really look around in a 3D virtual environment and it tracks where you're looking and where you're moving in that environment and it really gives you a, a heightened sense of perception of the virtual world around you and it really lets you create an experience which is unlike anything you've tried before. Already we see companies like Sony now developing their own display technology. Um, Sony's developing a head-mounted display called Project Morpheus and there are big companies like Valve and Facebook which are investing billions of dollars in this industry. The prospects of where this can go is really outstanding. I think that the, the thing that VR and the Rift really offer is, is the kind of the transportative aspect of it. You really feel like you've gone to a new place. You can do really interesting things with sound as well now. You have a pair of headphones on, you have the, the headset on, there's nothing else getting in. You don't have to work hard to, to, to believe you're in a new place. If you're playing a game on a monitor, you might be in a room, there might be some noise, there might be someone banging on your door, cars going past, whatever. Any one of those things can break the immersion for you. So when you've got that, that added layer, you're completely encompassed. It means you don't have to work so hard to believe you're there. So it just it's just more absorbing. Like I said, character interactions are going to be really interesting to see where that goes. And yeah, I think well, I think it remains to be seen what, what else people will do. There's going to be some really cool stuff, I imagine. The interesting thing about the whole virtual reality thing is that it's 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 in a, a place right now where it's not necessarily at a point where it should be widely commercially available. But what's being done right now is the groundwork foundations to get it into something that can be very universally appealing. And so right now I'm working on a game called Goddess. It's kind of like you, uh, you play the role of a god and you look down into a world. And the idea of having a lot of depth, being able to kind of see the clouds part over your eyes and being able to look down and, and you know, really kind of have that selected perspective is, is something really appealing. And even the, the kind of dynamics of going from being a god to being a person in the world and being able to look around, being able to look up in the sky with your Oculus Rift or your VR headset and, you know, look at the clouds is something, you know, really exciting, something that can open up new genres and all sorts of stuff. Where the consumer is going to be in five years' time is always a difficult thing to calculate. Uh, all it takes is one small improvement in technology and suddenly we jump in leaps and bounds. Uh, it's easier for me to try and speculate where we're going to be in about two years' time after the rift has been officially launched in the consumer sector and once we get a chance to see what Sony and uh, other companies are going to do. As was said at the Steam Dev Day um, back in January 2014, uh, they feel that the technology in just one year will be of such a high order that we've never seen this kind of performance of virtual reality before. Seamless graphics, no screen door. So I think the experience is going to be compelling. 
Whether we're experiencing it in games or experiencing it in a new form of genre is going to be the big question. Well, actually, I think virtual reality is much better for experimental art applications and sort of uh, anything character driven where you have to interact with another character. I think it's really good for VR. So you're seated down, you just look at another person, and you can actually sort of interact with them. I think that's the best use of VR. Not actually classical games like first person shooters or anything that are too fast for VR, currently at least. You have to look around and it gets dizzy and it's problematic. Whereas if you're just focusing on one on one spot and it's 3D and you can sort of you know look around or even with the positional tracking, you know, have more of a sense of the space. I think that's the perfect use of VR. So I initially developed interest for developing with the Oculus Rift because of working in the film space and need to interact in drama. And basically I'm working on a game called 4PM, which is the first person uh, experiential drama game. And I'm experimenting with VR because I think it helps get you more immersed and it helps get all the characters and their emotions across and you actually feel more like you're in the space, like you're looking at a character and you're seeing them move. We are developing Amber, an anxiety management virtual reality plat platform for clinicians and researchers. In our field, cognitive behavioral therapies based on exposure present a high barrier for people to enter treatment. Um, they are costly and they require people to face head on what they fear the most. Um, it, say, if you were afraid of flying and you wanted to get rid of it, you would need to go to your therapist, which in turn during treatment would go with you to the airport, and if you can bank the check, even have your therapist go the plane with you. Uh, VR offers a transitional space where you can start to manage your symptoms in a private setting such as your therapist's office or in the future even from the comfort of your home um, without having to board an actual plane or take a trip to the airport to start treating your symptoms. Uh, this leads uh, to reduced costs for both the therapist and the client. Um, it's also private and it, it adds convenience. Uh, studies done with less advanced technology since the 60s have proven that cognitive behavioral VR therapy is as effective as in vivo exposure, exposure therapy. So my work involves the Oculus Rift and uh, the Kinect and what I do is I'm looking into uh, phantom limb pain therapy uh, with VR. So the idea is someone who is uh, missing a limb, they have a problem where they think that the limb is still there and that gives them a lot of uh, pain and you know, upset. And so there was a, a project quite a while ago that involves placing the one limb they would have had inside a mirror box so they could see the reflection of their missing limb and this gave them some relief. So about 10 years ago now I think, I came up with a project to try and recreate the mirror box but in virtual reality. And the, the results were quite positive. But still the technology was a little bit clunky, difficult to use. But now that the Oculus Rift has finally now got into a clinic up in Manchester for clinical trials. There are other ways to do personalized content. And so I think as more and more people take this device into their lives, you're gonna see more and more people interested in creating these very interesting pieces of future content. One thing I'm really excited about, which I think is in the near future, is uh, a murder mystery thriller where you're watching this head tracking scene with a point of view and you hear pots drop over here and you look and somebody gets shot over there. So then you want to go through and watch it again the second time to see what happens. So I really, I think, you're not going to see the opportunity for that new media until enough consumers have taken it for all the media that already exists. But once you hit sort of that inflection point, I think we're going to see a whole new era of personalized entertainment. I really think the future, uh, and I do think it's probably three or four years away before you see things like virtual reality, augmented reality, and devices like the Glyph really hit saturation. And it's really exciting because we're just in the first steps. And once you look at the rest of wearable technology with sort of having all the sensors on you, imagine how crazy content can be when it knows what your heart rate is and it knows if you're nervous. and it you know, an interactive game that can tell how scared you are and ramp up and down the difficulty to match your terror threshold. Uh, you know, with the connected self and with this emerging space, I think three to four years from now is going to be humongous, especially considering the growth in artificial intelligence and creating dynamic stories for each person. 
I'm pumped. <laughs>